Call of Duty 20 Modern Warfare 3 Part 3 2023. Well folks, another year passes, which means Call of Duty gets another new entry. This year we continue the Modern Warfare reboot saga with Modern Warfare 3, which is supposed to be a reboot of Modern Warfare 3 2011, but it has the story and maps from Modern Warfare 2 2009, but still has guns and maps from Modern Warfare 2 2022, and also still somehow doesn't tie up the main villain from Modern Warfare 3 2011, because that'll happen in Modern Warfare 4. Now if that sounds confusing, it's because it is. With a mix of piss-poor management from Activision and a massive identity crisis, Call of Duty is like a 40-year-old man trying to sneak into frat parties to relive the good old days. Standing on their old football field in their crusty-ass high school letterman jacket. Good god, what is this? It looks like a half-life missing texture, bro. It has no respect for you as a fan, is a massive kick in the balls to the characters and stories you love, and has sold its soul entirely to the Fortnite gods. But... Is it fun? I mean, yeah, it's pretty fun. Do you think I can hit a no scope right now? Let's try. <laughs> Although the story makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> Has this ever happened to you, trying to start World War III on an empty stomach? Well, if so, let me introduce you to this video's sponsor, Factor. Look, we all know you bought $200 worth of groceries that are currently rotting in your fridge. Just let me die! I get it, I get it, you're a busy person. You don't have time to cook and clean, bleh. Factor offers you pre-prepared, fresh, never frozen meals cooked by gourmet chefs, all delivered right to your doorstep. I have personally tried it myself because I had to see it to believe it. The packaging even comes in recyclable cardboard and has these reusable gel cold packs, which is pretty sweet. I tried the cheesy bacon ranch shredded chicken meal and honestly, it kind of slapped, I can't even lie. I'm a massive foodie, all right? But lately, now that I'm spending more days in my editing dungeon, I don't have as much time to cook and clean. So this is very convenient and also delicious. Head over to factor75.com or click the link below and use code KELSKI50 to get 50% off your first factor box so you can go from this to this. Thank you, Factor, for buying my groceries and prepping them for me. Anyways, so in this video, I'm mainly going to be talking about the campaign. I was going to cover multiplayer and zombies too, but this game is like Randy Marsh's record-breaking longest turd, so it might take multiple flushes to get it all down, you feel me? If you want me to cover the rest of the game, let me know in the comments. There's going to be spoilers, if you care, which you probably don't, so moving on. The campaign in total took me a little over four hours to complete on Hardened, and that was with me fucking around most of the time. Wait, you know what? Let's, let's, let's reenact. Let's reenact, all right? All right, you stay still. All right, I'm, I go prone. You know, you're on top of me. Ah, see, now this is a Call of Duty Modern Warfare game. Honestly, you could probably do this in like two hours with how dumb the AI is. It has completely butchered the story and characters that it's based on. Johnny. And is essentially a Weenie Hut Jr. alternative timeline where bad guys don't die. No, no, no. They get put on trial. Yeah, take that, Shepard. I hope you like questions, you villain. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. The game opens up with you playing as well-known, famous Call of Duty character, Alpha 2-1. You were on a mission to... I don't know, they haven't explained it yet. All teams, eyes on target, phase one complete. Apparently phase one of this mission was locating this giant prison. And phase two is to get inside the prison. Well planned mission, guys. Can I just say, why does every new Modern Warfare game start with you just looking over the enemy? and then an explosion goes off. Can they not think of a single different way to start a campaign? So you infiltrate the base and learn in a quick line that you're here for a person. So you go and do Call of Duty things until you get to that person. I'm gonna need to aim out sights. Ooh, baby! Oh my god, riot shield pussy using riot shield! They're just like... Wah. There we go. I think I killed some, uh, some prisoners there, but you know, they probably had like some murder charge or something. You know, you know, maybe they littered. They deserve to die. Oh, it's Makarov? Yeah! Bro, my man Makarov needs some fucking lotion on his skin. And he's in prison? 
Since when? Anyways, you move on to phase three of this complex operation, which is to leave. Makarov suddenly feels like playing 20 questions and oh my god you have dialogue choices. Move over Baldur's Gate 3. This is what true player freedom looks like you idiots. Who holds power in this gulag? That'd be Activision sir. And the hackers. Yes Andre, very good. This feature never shows up again. So you make it out and escape on a boat with no resistance or chase. Even though one of the very first things you see in this game is a patrol boat. Maybe they were on their lunch break, I don't know. And the mission ends. Still don't know what his objective is though. So we cut to the Task 141 gang. With an opening shot of everyone's massive balls in your face. They are about to start a mission when Kate Laszlo informs them that Makarov has escaped. Makarov is out. Say it again, Laszlo? Makarov is out. He's on the move, John. Hey, one more time, it's kind of windy in here. Four. Turn us around! Turn us around now! So they just abort their current mission? What if that mission was extremely important? Now we're in Urzikstan. I forgot this chick's name. Bara, yeah, yeah. We'll confirm when cargo's in my possession. Stand by. Roger that, Kilo. We're good to go? Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up. Two massive bombshells just dropped. Alex is somehow alive after manually detonating a bomb in Modern Warfare. He has the stash that Shepard wish he had. Graves is alive after we fucking cooked him like a Thanksgiving turkey. Graves is KIA. Graves is tan muerto. They even confirmed that shit in Spanish, bro. Also, apparently he's friendly now too. Did the writers not play the previous games? There are six of them. What the fuck? So Alex and Farah are here to get some important cargo that is a game changer. Let's hope we never have to use them. What's them? I don't know, who cares? Meet Dina, a random character that has never been shown ever, but apparently is close to Farah. So is that like good or bad? Or manually detonated, sorry. Not really. oh. Well, I'm glad we spent two minutes on that cutscene. You're ambushed by the Russian Coney faction trying to take your missiles. The missiles. They're going for the missiles. Oh, by the way, that's what the cargo is. It's missiles. Here is where you're introduced to the first and definitely not last open combat mission. These missions are the most boring, laziest fucking missions I have ever played in a Call of Duty game. Can you see my laser? Ooh. Ooh, it's waving right in front of you. He's like a little cat. Look at the laser. You stupid idiot. These are like the equivalent of fetch quests in MMO games. The missions here boils down to three different objectives scattered across a recycled warzone map and then leaving the map. Wow. It's like Walmart Far Cry gameplay. Yeah, this is literally just Far Cry now. See, open world levels are interesting in games because they are either deep and rich in gameplay features, mechanics, choices, and exploration, or they're absolutely lifeless with generic enemy camps sprinkled around. Guess which one Call of Duty is? Do they even have like a, like a cloud? Like a fog cloud, like you're like, like discovering the map, like some fucking open world game. Like, wow, I wonder what's over here. So many possibilities. <laughs> like, what's the fucking point? The only time one of these missions is difficult in any way is if you play on harder difficulties and there's a ton of enemies shooting at once. But then that just makes it so you can't go loud on hard difficulties. So you're forced to go stealthy. It's just overall really shit design. So anyways, you put trackers on the cargo in plain fucking sight and glowing red. Ah, the enemy definitely won't find those and destroy them. Also, why even put trackers on in the first place? Why is Farah alone? You're telling me Farah didn't have any guards posted by her ballistic missiles? I know the excuse is, Oh, we're pinned down. It's just a little questionable is all I'm saying. They could have just killed everyone here and stopped them from taking the missiles. Anyways, let's see how Makarov and the gang are doing. Oh. So Makarov does the classic big bad villain kills his own ally to make a point trope that is super fucking cliche. But like, what was the point? Ivan, is it to work my plan? Ivan didn't trust his plan? What plan? Sir, you haven't really explained anything yet. They also gave Makarov this weird quirk where he is super anal about time. Maybe he's on the spectrum. So Makarov, after killing the guy who didn't believe in his unexplained plan, begins to explain that plan. He says that his main objective is to take back control of Urzikstan and restore glory to Russia. Okay, cool. 
Task 1 for 1 has a brief meeting to confirm that the Russia Kony Group has mobilized on multiple fronts. AKA, here are some more open combat missions. They also confirmed that they stole the missiles under Makarov's orders. Kony's got their own missiles. What does Makarov want these for? Uh, I don't know, soap? Maybe he wants to hang him up as fucking wall decor. So task one for one heads to this nuclear power plant for something probably evil. Time to perform another open combat mission. I don't want, I'm not gonna pull the parachute. Just, just, just take me. Take me. No, it saved me, dude. I swear I didn't press anything. <laughs> Your objective at this nuclear power plant is to Destroy three helicopters. Yeah, that'll thwart their evil plans. I tried to have as much fun as I could. Wait, I have an idea. I have an idea, guys. What's up, motherfuckers? <sighs> yeah, that was sick. Holy shit. You learn then that they are extracting chemical weapons. You see a helicopter carrying some out, and you ask your squad of elite soldiers to bring it down. Soap is like, okay, I got you, man. and then proceeds to do absolutely fuck all. Bro, Soap is just an idiot in this game. Dude couldn't follow a McDonald's order. So, they escape with the chemical weapons. Great. Kony's dumbass soldiers somehow blow themselves up and release the chemical gas in the reactor. I guarantee that's linked to zombies somehow, right? That has to be linked to zombies. Captain Price inhales some of this gas and is <gasps> in danger? Six two to watch out, we need medevac now. Well, there was the big moment from the trailer. Captain Price doesn't go to a hospital or anything. Dude smokes a cigar a day. He got fucking iron lungs. So he just wakes up, fully geared, implying that he was fucking passed out moments before. And they're like, so anyways, here's your headset. Let's get back to work. This truly says a lot about our society. Cody got away with the chemicals. Affirmative. Yeah, no thanks to you, pretty boy. Why don't you go get a girlfriend or something? Leave the war for the real men, okay? Makarov has been out of prison for six hours and he's already ahead of us. Wait, hold on. It's been six hours? We broke Makarov out at 2 o'clock AM. That means that it is 8 in the morning, and the dude has already stolen missiles and chemical weapons. You find out Kony is keeping missiles in this silo base. Fantastic. Why does Kony need a silo for portable missiles? I don't know, Captain Price. Maybe they want to donate them to a fucking charity. The caption's completely broke here. I don't know if it was just a me thing, but yeah. Price learns that it was apparently General Shepard who supplied Farah with the missiles that were stolen. Oh, not that one. The, uh, other one. Huh. Seems like a familiar plot point. Who the fuck keeps giving this guy missiles? How many oopsie daisies does it take, people? Farah refuses to tell Captain Price any more information. Um, why? I never want to lie to you, but I can't tell you everything. What you call classified, I call secrets. My classified and secrets are the same shit. It's like you can't know. It's like <laughs> classified secrets are like fucking synonyms, pretty much. You call it tomato. I call it tomato. They are on the same team trying to stop Makarov from giving her people the game over screen. Instead, she's like, just trust me, bro. Or like, we forgot that part of the story, but it was going to be really epic. Trust me. So the team heads to these bunkers, which means it's time for another open combat mission. Track him and get his keycard. Use it on the door for entry. And you? I know another way in. I know another way in. It will make it so I don't have to be by you. Because friendly AI in a Call of Duty campaign? What are you, fucking crazy? There is, you guessed it, three points of interest where a guard with a key is. There's that magic three number again, hmm creative. I want to point out here that you hardly get any more meaningful dialogue during these missions. Most of your allies, if you have any, are just like, we need to move up. Move the Keep pushing this way. Keep moving through the concourse. Get out of here. Get to safety. Go. You discover that Makarov did some minecrafting and combined the warheads with the chemicals, making chemical missiles. That's bad. Farah says she knows how to disarm the missiles. That's good. But it's too late to disarm, apparently, even though they haven't left yet. Low-key terrible design, they should probably do a factory callback. So you have to go close the door so the missile blows up in the bunker instead of leaving. Farah says she will hold back the missiles as long as she can. What the fuck does that even mean? Are you gonna hold it down with your dead weight? So she can't stop the missiles, but she can slow down the process. Gotcha. Here you get to the first semi-boss fight of the game. The Juggernaut. Oh, we gotta hurry up! There's stakes. Oh, oh, we got a boss fight. Let's go, baby. All right. Boss fight. 
What the f- <coughs> Which has the ability to phase through walls. Okay, drop shining's not working against him. He's too clean for that. Ah, uh, it will light work. And then you kill them. Moving on. You successfully stopped the missions. Hooray! Let's see how Soap is doing at his silo base. We're too late, Captain. Cody surrounded the controls. Absolutely fucking useless. Got it. Two missiles are fired. Soap couldn't stop the chemicals or the missiles. Oh, he is definitely getting a written warning after all of this. The missiles are headed to a base that Kate Laszlo is at. No. Kate. Kate. <laughs> Kate. Kate. We cut back three hours earlier. Kate. We get to see Giga Chad Nikolai. Laszlo claims she has a contact that knows whether or not Makarov is working for the Kremlin, aka the Russian government. Anyways, this contact is revealed to be Yuri Volkov. Yuri? Holy shit. Aw oh, man, he was an extremely important character in the old Modern Warfare 3. I can't wait to see how this character evolves in this game. So they fly into Arklov base, that somehow can't detect an aircraft at this distance. You go undercover to find your contact. It's the first mission in a while that's not open combat, and it's mainly just walking. Don't act suspicious at all. Don't act suspicious. Wait, what the fuck? I'd just be like, oh, she's just a new recruit. Remember, no English. Never seen her before? Stop looking at me, all right? I will call your supervisor. Don't you even look at me right now. This is sexual harassment. You need a key card to get inside the base. So you get one very stealthily. Oh, there's a guy right there. Down. Ah, not a single sound made. We find Yuri, and he gives us the grand prize of... FSB files in Barkos research. Research. Okay. How the fuck does knowing how the weapons were made help us stop them? You might as well have given me the recipe for gunpowder. Maybe I can stop all guns, you fucking dickwad. More forced dialogue about, oh, we're both the bad guys. Wow, this is so deep. This very informative conversation is disrupted by the previously fired missiles. So you need to get out of there. Ugh. I'm running. Ugh. Ass shot, let's go. Nice. Apparently, Kate is immune to the effects of highly potent chemical weapons, since she is just fine. The attack is blamed on Farah's ULF group, and the mission ends. So, Yuri, one of the most influential characters in the Modern Warfare franchise, someone that you play as for a big portion of the OG Modern Warfare 3, and was heavily involved with Makarov and a nuke going off, has been downgraded to an informant, whose information doesn't change the story at all. This meeting was just forced in attempted fan service. That was more fan disrespect. Nothing was said here. This entire section was a large nothing combo with the side of fuck all. You could have cut this entire section from the game and the story wouldn't have changed because it just goes right into the next mission, which is a whole different thing. Now it's time, ladies and gentlemen. After so much anticipation and hype, we get to Modern Warfare 3's No Russian Moment. A historic and controversial moment in video game history when Call of Duty truly had the balls to shed light on humanity's darkest sides, putting the controls of these horrors directly into your hands. How does Modern Warfare 3 handle this moment? <sighs> We start the scene off with Makarov going through airport security, passing his important belongings through, including Mr. Snuggles. Because even terrorists need to cuddle at night, alright? First problem. How does not a single person or guard notice that this is motherfucking Makarov in the flesh? A terrorist that has committed numerous atrocities. Eh, go ahead, seems fine to me. You're getting fired. You just let a terrorist through. That's gonna look terrible on your resume. You then switch perspectives to a lady on a plane named Samara. A level 3 Twitch sub starts talking to you creepily about your family. Hey, you know those new Pokemane cookies? They're really not that expensive if you think about it. He says that he knows that she served in the ULF fighting against Russia. Somehow. They just happen to find this random ass soldier going to see her family. Alright. Again, I love how Call of Duty does colored names. Huh, this mysterious creepy man with bad breath knows my entire family's names and that I'm an ex-soldier. But eh, I don't know. His name is yellow. It could go either direction. 
Oh man, he's a bad guy? Dang it. Oh, here we go, folks. The moments you've been waiting for. I'm very curious how this is going to link to, like, the original... Pick down! Oh. Sorry, I just had to make sure it was down. But how does it say civilian casualties will not be tolerated? Okay, this guy's a civilian, guys. My bad. I'm so sorry. Ugh. Oh shit, I didn't do the takedown. Wait, no, no, I want to do the takedown. I take it back. Can I do a takedown now? Here we go. Oh, that's right, bitch. Wait, I just, I'm a hero. I just saved that man. I just disarmed him. They watched me disarm him. Now. Help me! Give me the cell phone! Oh! Oh! We have to defuse the bomb! Oh, bitch! We're going to die! Let me go! I need to get to that bomb! Hurry! Give it to me! Give me the bomb! Damn. Okay, there's a lot to unpack here. First off, how on earth did this guy get a gun onto the plane? He's not like a guard like these guys are, you know, trying to be undercover. You're telling me this Discord moderator got a gun onto a plane? Alright, bud. How did they get armored vests onto the plane? How did they get a fucking bomb onto the plane? Why doesn't Samara put away the pistol to seem less intimidating? Why does this mission suck so much ass? The lack of balls here is just... So sad, man. There's no making the player pull the trigger themselves. Just pure, scripted, gutless garbage. And the cherry on top? You don't even fucking hear or see the words NO RUSSIAN. This moment in the trailer here? Just a complete and utter lie. Oh my gosh. But don't worry, it gets worse. So Makarov tries to frame Samara as a terrorist working for the ULF. However, all of this evidence is on the plane that crashed. So you need to get there before the authorities arrive. Somehow, the country's government is slower than Farah and Alex on dirt bikes. So they make it to the crash site before them. But they weren't first, as your typical Coney lackeys have made it there first, somehow. What are you doing? Going down there. Far, there's at least 20 guns holding that area. Alex, this is Call of Duty. Are you fucking stupid? This looks like a very open. Fuck. Open combat mission. You go and do Call of Duty things and hack the phone so Makarov can't frame the ULF. And the day is saved. I made it. <laughs> oh, he was killed? In the original Modern Warfare 2, the framing is actually successful and a literal fucking war starts between the US and Russia. But uh, that's too interesting for the game. Let's just keep on thwarting every single one of Makarov's plans. We don't need stakes. Task 141 has another meeting to debrief the events. Does Makarov. Good work, Soap. You are truly the Michelangelo of our time. So now that everyone's on the same page, Soap and Price reveal a massive plot point. Had him right in our fucking hands. I should have killed him on my other channels. What? So they already had Makarov? Uh, when did that happen between here and here? And they didn't bust a cap in his ass? That's not the Captain Price I know. So now we know why he was in prison at the start. Dope. Laszlo asks what happens and triggers an anime flashback in Captain Price. Because the story is wrapping up too quickly. Deploy the Warzone Recycled Content. Flashback. Flashback four years ago. Makarov is committing a random generic terrorist attack on the Warzone Stadium. And you gotta go stop him. Finally, after ages, we get a set piece of driving a car. Get out of the way, dumbass! I'll take it. So this is the one mission in the game where it's like, wow, look at this terrible event. See, we have balls. It's just a sad attempt at trying to blur the line and push boundaries. The other reboot games had moments that were so much more intense and personal, man. Anyways, you go down a linear path of shooting bad guys. And there's civilians also, so gotta be a little bit more careful. You big forehead bitch! You clear the stadium, go underground, and see an ambulance. Go in, go in. Good to cover. Could be my Psych! Oh! You 
fucking thought. <laughs> Ole! <laughs> that was actually really close. <laughs> American healthcare moment. Wait, what the fuck? So Makarov just drives right to you? Huh? No epic chase scene of trying to capture him yourself? Nah, the game gets tired and is like, oh, here you go, whatever. And Captain Price doesn't kill him here? Look, I understand if it's like an important VIP or someone who has info on how to get to the main big bad guy. But like, he is the main big bad guy. He's right here. There's literally no point in keeping him alive, bro. Oh, ugh. This is not Captain Price, man. This is Captain Cost. So anyways, you slowly push him towards the extraction zone to pad out more game time. Wait, can I push you the opposite way? Hold on. No, go that way. What's up, nerd? Huh? Yeah, walk much? Come so much padding that my game actually crashed during this segment. Oh. What happened? Just to force me to spend more time with it. So you make it to the chopper. As you're leaving, they have a conversation where Makarov randomly talks about time again because that's his villain quirk. Anyways, he blows up a different target than the stadium he was also attacking. Filthy prank! End of flashback. So we're back to the present, and task one for one gets a random call. Oh my god, it's General Shepard. Who shouldn't even be here since he should have gotten brain surgery in the last game since this is Modern Warfare 3 and not 2, but whatever. You also see Graves, who, again, should be a pile of goddamn ashes right now, but whatever. What are you up to? I'm up to doing my fucking job, kid. You should try it sometime. My fucking job is to kill the enemy. Guess what you are? Let me guess, let me guess. He's an enemy. I got it. This naked mole rat says that he has information that can lead to finding Makarov. In exchange for him being able to come out of hiding. Because he has two missile oopsies and is putting himself in timeout somewhere. Also, at this point, I've seen Makarov shirtless so many times that the real war crime would be wasting these good looks by putting them behind bars. The information is Makarov's financier, Milena Romanova, located on this remote island with all this open space, all this ground for a open combat mission. This is one of the better ones, though, because one, it's not on recycled Warzone content, and two, you get access to the best weapon in the game. <laughs> tactical bottle. It's not just any bottle, it's a tactical bottle. Tactical bottle, smash! <laughs> Got the glass in his fucking eyes. So you do some stuff, doesn't matter. And then you get to Milena. Oh, hell yeah, baby. Time for some good old fashioned interrogation. Time to take the gloves off like Modern Warfare 2019. This is your personal. Okay, huh? Money's hardly been touched. So will be. Oh, we're threatening her money. Let's drain it. Don't, don't you fucking dare. This game couldn't even make an interrogation have any stakes or emotional weight, man. Fop. Actually, you know what? This is money on the line. Activision must have read the script and was like, Oh my god. Who would do something like this? This is pure evil. Activision CEO here cracks and spills the beans, which helps get a lead on Makarov. Apparently he buys old buildings and property. Maybe he's a real estate agent on the side. Back on Makarov's end, they are very upset with the financier. She's probably gonna be flipping burgers soon. They also very quickly say, even Shadow Breaks, implying that they have a prisoner from Shadow Company. By the way, so much of this game just offhands important information. And this was said in Russian, so it can be very easy to miss. Like they are talking about an interrogation they just did, and then talking about what we just did, switching back and forth between the two like every other sentence. It's just awful pacing and writing. Anyways, Laszlo briefs one for one on the apartment complex that Makarov is currently renovating. Ah oh, man, this location seems pretty interesting. Finally, some tight corridors to check corners. Surely, this couldn't be a- I will say, this was probably the most fun open combat mission. If you can even call it that. It felt much more like a traditional Call of Duty level with multiple paths to take. Oh, I can actually go outside the window? What? Doing some very vertical parkour and dunking on some Coney oh, nerds. Sick. There, however, is one I'm massive out. problem okay. with this mission. Yeah, this is a cool mission. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. No fucking way. You go back to the very beginning. There's like three goddamn checkpoints. And this is on a level with claymores. Oh, I, 
actually don't really need it. What just happened? You make your way up the apartment, blasting fools as you go, until you reach the roof, where there's a big battle where you actually get to fight alongside your comrades for once. And here is why I realized why open combat missions are usually solo. I... Price, what are you doing there? <laughs> what are you doing there? Because the friendly AI love putting their massive also dome in front of your barrel. What you got? So after you do a whole lot of... You finally get to Nolan, the little so rat ready? hiding out in the building. <laughs> Protein. You pick him up, ass first. Do a lot more. And then you extract him, because we just can't be asked to kill a single bad guy in this game. However, he does get brutal interrogation, but we don't even get to fucking see it. They really did some ghost fist to jaw interrogation off screen, but yet we get to see an angry businesswoman throw a tantrum over her money. Exquisite. 141 checks Nolan's phone and gets more intel on some serious business. That captive they mentioned for 0.5 seconds is being transported. So you get sent to perform a safe and illegal traffic stop to see who it is. Yeah. Let me help you out real quick here. Let me cut a hole in your throat so you can breathe better. Oh, that's not your throat, that's your heart. You dunk the entire convoy, which was cool, but also like, you're literally just drowning your target that you're trying to get back alive? Like, especially with a bag over his head and being upside down. Nah, bro would have tapped out in like 20 seconds. Oh my god. It's Shepard. They found him. Somehow. Also, yeah, this saggy old nutsack definitely wouldn't have lasted that long underwater. Immersion broken. So one for one all wants to kill Shepard now. But why? He was a prisoner who was tortured into giving info. Unlike in Modern Warfare 3, where he literally, spoilers I guess, kills Ghost and basically works with Makarov to start World War Fucking 3. It's like they tried taking certain plot points of the old game and just lazily shoved them into their new story. I know Makarov's next target. Shepard has intel on Makarov's next target. Somehow. What is he, Makarov's therapist? Did he just tell Shepard all of his plans while he was interrogating him? I don't know. Finally, another curated Call of Duty mission. So now you basically just escort Humpty Dumpty here to an evac zone. Not a single hair strand on the head. In this game, you're either doing three objectives or extracting something. Tubular. This mission's aesthetic is cool. Gives me some nice cliffhanger vibes except way less cool. They also have these annoying ass armored snipers. Yeah, nice little thermo camo on these guys. Can't even see him. Bro, the thickest man on the planet. You know, I'm going in deep for this. Yeah, block that shit. This is probably the longest traditional COD level in this game. And it has this fun set piece where you get to blow a bunch of shit up. 5 out of 10. It reached the bare minimum. So you successfully extract Shepard. But you bring him to another barren frozen wasteland. Because apparently the first wasteland wasn't good enough to just be extracted oh, there. Jesus, you're almost done, Kelsky. What is the agenda of this little powwow? A choice. Do I have one? No. Then it's not a fucking choice then, is it? Oh my god, no, I can't, I can't do it. Anyways, Shepard lives. Makarov and he tells you that Makarov plans to blow up this dam to flood the city in Verdansk. That... Wait, oh, Verdansk? Wait, we at least kill either That's Shepherd? the war zone map, oh my god, no. Open combat mission. It's important to mention that at this point in the story, Makarov already lost his missiles, his chemical weapons, his piss poor no Russian plot. Like the high stake problems are already solved. Bro, Makarov is like fucking Plankton with his file cabinet of evil plans. Once one gets ruined, well, time to pull out plan V. We finally get to play as Ghost in yet another open combat mission. There's nothing much to say here. It's just the same shit, man. Although this map has a fun water slide you can go down. Whee! <laughs> 10 out of 10. Best level in the game. Anyways, you shoot some bad guys and defuse the bombs. Plan V thwarted. Meanwhile, the two characters, who should have been dead, and the rest of the cast team up because they found this base in the middle of nowhere that Makarov might be at. And here we got your classic AC-130 mission. That's been done who knows how many times now? The Modern Warfare Nostalgia Cow is truly being pushed to its absolute limits here. So you do the AC-130 type mission that somehow feels worse than Modern Warfare 2. Notice in this game the impact difference. 
the shockwave literally shakes your plane. And then you have this game. <laughs> you destroy everything, but there's no body for Makarov. Pretty sus, I do say. Shepard tries to convince Price that Makarov is dead. And Price is like, you got a source, bro? And Shepard is like, My source is that I made it the fuck up! So, you leave. And finally, we get some goddamn justice by putting Shepard on an episode of Judge Judy. This is just fucking pathetic, man. It's not even good court dialogue. It's just like, did you do this thing? Yeah. No, Your Honor. Hey, other guy. Did he do this thing? Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> Nothing even happens, dude. Like, we don't even get to see the final verdict. Developing story. <laughs> is it developing, though? Is it really? So since Shepard isn't with us anymore, and we don't have someone to give us the intel for the next mission, they're just like, yeah, we just intercepted the entire enemy's comms, and now we know where Makarov is. Great work, Laszlo. Makarov is in London, and he's moving on to Plan L. You'll never guess what the L stands for. Makarov is meeting a hacker here, and you gotta hunt them down. You get to actually do something that isn't killing for once, holy shit. Some extremely basic, cyberpunk-style camera scanning stuff, except way less interesting. You can pet a dog on this mission, though, so it gains plus 0.5 points. Dog. 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 You track the hacker bro into a tunnel, and you just assume that Makarov is hiding down there as well. This is it. The final showdown, baby. You finally get to fight alongside more than one person, and a big battle breaks out. Snap back to reality! Freeze. I said freeze. With absolutely no music. Seriously, did they compose like one song for the whole game? I'm pretty sure I can hear crickets. You fight your way through the tunnels, take out some bullet sponge juggernauts, and realize there's a bomb? Oh no. You go to disarm it. And then the most bullshit moment in Call of Duty history happens. Good. What the fuck? What the fuck? Take this to hell with you, Captain. Never bury your enemies alive. Hello? We're gonna shot in the head twice. Dude, what the fuck, man? This is how soap, motherfucking soap, goes out. Are you serious? Makarov just runs up out of absolutely nowhere like some douchebag YouTube prankster, kills Soap, and then gets away? We had guys right there. They weren't shot because only two gunshots were fired when Makarov pulls up, and then only after they finish off Soap, everyone's like, oh shit boys. Go get him. Oh my god, I cannot believe how stupid this is. Price doesn't even give a shit. There's no... Oh no, 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 you have to go now, get off me. Nothing. He's just like, damn, that's rough, brother. Yeah, we got one KIA. Fuck this game. Anyways, you disarm the bomb. Rog, on three. One. Pour Soap's ashes into the ocean, and the credits roll. Oh yeah, and then now, Price sneaks in the Shepherd's office to kill him? As if he was responsible for Soap's death? You don't even get to do it yourself, man. No, press F to ice this old bitch. Nothing. Fuck this game. I'm honestly speechless. And there you have it. The Modern Warfare 3 campaign. Call of Duty's soul has been long gone from its body, but now that soul has been fucking vacuumed like a ghost in Luigi's Mansion. Completely non-existent. And yet, it will still sell well, it will still make a bajillion dollars, because human beings can't help themselves. I feel sorry for all of the talented developers who were forced by Activision to crank out this wet fart in a mere 16 months. The developers deserve better, Call of Duty deserves better, and Activision deserves to be sentenced to 10 years of constant Halo 3 teabagging. Do not buy this game. Rapid fire final thoughts. There's no military war vibe that the originals had. Yuri does absolutely nothing. Makarov is still alive. Shepard's death was lame. Soap's death was atrocious. And what's worse of all, that this is all now canon in the current universe.
For the love of God, if you make another game, give Ghost his old design back. You already showed you can make it, just make this his current design. All I can think of now is this fucking meme. I hope you enjoyed the video, and hopefully I saved you $70. If you made it this far, here's a picture of my dog. We are almost at 100k, man. It's possible before the end of the year, I believe. Honestly, this video will probably be dated after the next Call of Duty comes out. What does it matter though? The COD cycle will continue anyways. People already miss Modern Warfare 2 2022. Nothing matters. 1 out of 10. Go play Lethal Company.